And we're back again. I hope everybody had a, a nice little break to go, you know, do a little bio break, get some water, get some snackies, because we're about to uh we're about to hand out some snacks and drinks of our own. Folks out here about to get some knuckle sandwiches and a little bit of Hawaiian punch. Wow. Uh, we're coming up with this next run, but first, Games Done Quick is looking for a new mainline event volunteer coordinator. Feel free to review the duties and apply at gamesdonequick.com slash jobs if you're interested. If you missed out on any of our shows or events, be sure to check out the VODs on youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, speaking of knuckle sandwiches and a little Hawaiian punch, uh, Pop No Tart, won't you, won't you introduce this game, introduce yourself, and uh, tell us what we're in for. Hey, I'm Pop No Tarts, feel free to call me Pop. And today I'm doing Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name on Beginner, any percent on PS5. Uh, this game takes place right after Yakuza 6, before, during, and after Yakuza Like a Dragon, also known as uh, Like a Dragon 7. Uh, it's been one of my favorite entries in the franchise. Fantastic. And uh, I believe uh, it's not just you. You have two other fantastic beans along with you. Absolutely. I have uh, my friends Supernamu and Thormagunder joining me today. Hello, I'm Namu. You guys saw me yesterday running Resident Evil 5 and I'm here for the vibes on the Yakuza game here. We love the vibes. And Ooh. Oh no, go ahead. And hello there, my name is Thorman Gander and uh, I'm a friend of Pops and also a streamer uh, on the platform, but happy to be here and thanks for inviting me along. Yeah, we'll go right on ahead and dive right on in. Yeah. And... We'll be starting in three, two, one, go. I love how they tell us it's a work of fiction. I mean, you gotta <laughs> let people know it's a work of fiction. Otherwise, you, you wanna wanna go to Japan and think people are just gonna be beating each other up like that on the street, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about those people getting beat up. Okay, but who would you like to get beat up by most? Mm. They're alive. So. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's a, what is it? The part in the game where there's like a Coliseum fight and there's like two tigers that jump in. Ooh. You know, to be mauled by tigers. There are <laughs> worse ways. Uh, there we go. And uh, we're starting this right on up with some tutorial fights. And uh, uh, just an alleyway fight, of course, because that's how every game starts out with a what? with a wonderful, wonderful character like Kiryu, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, we're going to be using some heavy attacks and uh, cones to defeat the enemies. Cones are going to be some of our best friends during this run. And you're going to see Pop use a lot of heavy attacks. There's the cone and that little whip-like attack. And boom, there goes those enemies right down. But uh, you're also going to see a lot of cutscene cut ki skipping because that's what this game is. Lots of cutscenes with little bits of combat in between. Can Chapter one, Hidden Dragon. Can I take a second and step back? Did we just see <laughs> this dude spirit <laughs> Spider-Man a cone at himself? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, no, I just, long as long as we on the same page. All right. <laughs> Listen, if you can't Spider-Man a cone to yourself, then are you really doing Yakuza right? I, I see. I'm, you know, that's why. That's why I failed the last four tryouts. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So we're also gonna be going in a little bit to the harbor, which we're going to be talking to this guy who's gonna give us a stamina. And uh, you can do this, but this is generally optional as well. And um. Then we'll have some action tutorials for the heat mode and a few other things that we got to go through. And then we're going to upgrade attack. So that's what's on the agenda for this first part of the game. Um, from there, we'll continue it on to some mysterious men. And uh, we're going to be using, or we're going to be stealing some bats to deal with them. And there we go. Now, Let's just talk about how someone had said you got to face the cone sequences. <laughs> and that's the greatest pun in the world. That pun is amazing. I feel like Yakuza, oh, no. like, 
I know they've made movies of Yakuza, but they... I need more of them. I need more live-action movies of Yakuza. They had one in the works a while back. I know they did Kiwami, and that was a fantastic movie. Uh, just surprisingly well-done adaption, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, also, a couple things about this run. One thing you're going to hear constantly throughout the game is DOD, which is going to stand for Dragons of Dojima. You'll also hear us referring to set pieces, which are going to be ongoing fight sequences, usually at the end of or during major points in a chapter with enemies, mini bosses, and then a final bosses. And um, you'll see items appear such as Nourishment of Sea King. We're just giving you a little bit of background so you know what to expect as the game goes on. But on top of that, uh, you'll be seeing us use light and heavy attacks, especially heavy attacks with the cone. And this is going to make it a lot easier for us to deal major damage to enemies and not get stuck in long combat because that kills runs really quickly. Now, can I ask, Namu, do you have a favorite character in this game that we're going to be seeing at any point? Like, out of the entire series, do you have a favorite character in this game in particular? Wow. I have actually never played a single Yakuza game. My only introduction to this is Pop's speedrun of this. But there's a particular character in this game that just looks mighty fine in a nice blue suit that unfortunately Pop kills. He doesn't oh. die. Nishitani. He you just takes this. a nap. Just takes a nap. Yeah, just a nice little nap. These men are folded. They get folded and then they disappear. They return to the planet. These people are dead after getting hit by these cones. <laughs> You've never gone invisible while taking a nap? Come on. <laughs> God dang. Also, so one of the things that we're going to try and do with the Mysterious Men fight is we're going to be trying to steal a bat and use heavy attacks to finish all these enemies. Um, it, not too tricky, uh, but also we're going to attempt to sneak behind some of these uh, mysterious men and use uh, EX mode to finish the enemies. If there's any enemies left, they're going to use bats to attack them using heavy finishers on any stragglers. And uh, Hanwa, who's Kiryu's manager, takes out the last guy. So that'll be a nice little cleanup for us. Now we're in Yokohama. And uh, I believe we're going to be investigating the Siryu clan. So uh, that means it's shopping time. And at this point, you're going to be grabbing a very special pair of items. The pure white briefs from the Love Magic Shop for some gear. And uh, I, I don't know if we get to see Kiryu wearing these, but we are going to equip them. So there will be that. It is a bit unfortunate that we don't actually see like costume changes in the game because just, you know, going to the store and buying one pair of underwear and no more than that, so we can only assume that Kiri wears the same pair for the entirety of this game. Not once has she showered. You can change his clothes, you just can't do it in the speed runs too much time. <laughs> the, the most expensive pair of underwear you will ever buy. I don't think I've ever bought an, a pair of underwear that was that expensive. I mean, they're Hanes. <laughs> so when do I get my when do I get my Michael Jordan style Kiryu commercial? Oh, that's a that's a that's a great question. <laughs> See, I was gonna tell you to check your email, but I mean, I guess now that you already asked, you should probably <laughs> check your email. <laughs> and here we go, buying the briefs. Perfect. Now, see, what I really want, though, is they should give us the maid costume for Kiryu that's in those shops. That's what I really want to see. Give me combat maid Kiryu. Yeah, do it, you right, cowards. Yeah. Right? Do it, Sega. You won't. But now we're fighting the Siryu clan members, and we're just going to dodge the right, grab the bench, and just start going baseball on all of these fools. Because how else do you deal with a bunch of clan members when you're having to deal with, well, a rooftop, a bench, and a couple chairs? And they're hugging each other. Why not just send them all to heaven together? Exactly. Listen, we can't all be Spider-Man just webbing people with gadgets off roof. Sometimes you gotta send them the hard way. Funny that you mention that, because in the games, they actually has a uh, where Spider-Man webs someone and they're just webbed to a building. You throw them off. Now, there are two options here. 
uh, EX mode and use a bat to clean up enemies. But you can also use a spider gadget, which helps you to steal a bat from the enemies and you just start swinging away, taking these fools out. They're the, they're the people who made the mistake of approaching you in a parking lot in the first place, so that's not really your problem. Yeah, no. I think they regret their decisions. I hope so. I hope so. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. I feel like I feel like the deal with Kiryu is you know you're a good person if Kiryu wouldn't fight you. Because Kiryu never fights anyone who doesn't deserve it. But with us like skipping all these cutscenes, we're not getting the full story. So all we're seeing technically is Kiryu just running around Japan, beating up random people. We're here in a parking lot and we don't know what led to this. So literally, Kiryu's a menace. Now, this mysterious man we're fighting is Suruno, uh, and basically just going to beat him down with the pipe, as you see. And um, he's basically going to change phases uh, once he gets down to 1 HP just before the counter tutorial, which, there you go. Um, but, yeah, he's a... <laughs> I like his glasses. I want them. I was trying to get L2 to trigger and held miserably. That's okay, it happens. Alright, so he's gonna have to avoid L2. <laughs> there's confusion that's been uh, so far through this that people are or are not dying. Um, Pop keeps saying they are, Namu keeps saying they're not, but the way, uh, oh, the way man around. is... Yes, I think they're dying. They're not dying. It's it's canon that Kiryu... Oh, I'm sorry, Kiryu, yes. Kiryu, Banjuba, and Sajiba have never killed. That is, that there is we the go. canon. Okay, okay. So Pop, Pop is swearing that every one of them are taking a nap and namu's like nah dude just got folded like wet origami so he is he is definitely dead so they kind of have oh, oh no go ahead i was gonna say they kind of have the batman approach we're not going to kill you but we're going to maim you in a way that is going to put you in the hospital and jack up <laughs> that pill a little bit yeah i'm just saying with man in a suit in particular I don't, I don't know. The way he just caught that combo, that six-piece combo in a biscuit, looks like you just sent him to Jesus first class. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> just put some ice on. A fact, I know for a fact that, like, health insurance is just, like, it must be really affordable in Japan right now because <laughs> with the amount of people that get voted, like, the doctors are working 24-7. What I want to know is how do how are there so many people in this game that want to fight on the street? Like, that's what gets me. <laughs> they must have like a rolling admissions thing with a higher turnover rate than McDonald's, and that's saying something. <laughs> I just want to know the thought process behind folks that are like, if I'm with six of my my homies and I see a dude just walk up and start handing out punches like. Uh, free samples at a mall uh, food court and just start hitting people like I saw at one point some dude just got stomped like at that point I'm like mm, Carl just got got his whole faith caved in I don't I don't want none of that dude you can you can go the boss is that way I'm I'm cool I, I clock out the 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 thing is for me I'm not gonna fight the person who in Yakuza 0 could make a bowling ball materialize and use that bowling ball on a street to get a perfect strike on your face. Okay, if I see that against one of my peeps, I'm running the other way. You can take my finger, I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are we at this point, Pop? Uh, well, we just finished the street fight after the car wreck, and now we're running to the convenience store because uh, Jory, you here, wants to dodge the cops and is just like, I could use a cigarette right now. You know, I had a stressful day. <laughs> Nothing like a smoke break. And so we're going to be getting some Tariners, and we're going to be getting some Bentos and some Sake soon as well. So we got a nice little shopping list to pick up some stuff before we really start diving into it. And this is basically just going to make it so that we can heal up where we can and not take too many detours to stop. This will be very helpful. And uh, then from there, we'll be going to Daidoji Temple, which will be the set piece for our chapter one and a couple of mini bosses as well, uh, leading up to a final boss uh, for the chapter. And then we'll find ourselves into chapter two. But the first part of this is 
now that we're in the doji is going to be the dod combo and uh we're gonna get a table we're gonna swing that table around in the next room and uh just continue to beat down foes as we can eventually working our way up to what will be five or so mini bosses or i think it's four in this chapter but um basically the only real stops will be if we need to use turners if need be and uh just building heat <coughs> and finishers as we can i've never seen a guy just duck for his life when doing this Listen, who's the smart one? Like, I, what would you do if some random man comes in and grabs the table and starts swinging it? Like, I mean, I guess I would You wouldn't see me in that building. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> like, you wouldn't see me in these predicaments. Period. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd be minding my business. Nothing will ever, ever get me into a situation like this where I'm getting the crap out of me in the middle of a temple so now that we're here we're just gonna clean up enemies with uh if we can get a weapon from the ground we're pretty much just gonna clean up enemies and then this moves us into our first mini boss which will be umbrella man and uh yeah we're gonna get under his umbrella i'm sorry i had to the opportunity yeah. <laughs> hello hello hey <laughs> rihanna approves Someone in chat said, I open my door and I see Kiryu, I'm going back inside. <laughs> uh, here. You're okay if you're Finn. He protects us. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it, Kiryu. Umbrella Man is intimidating, not gonna lie, with his gunbrella. Gunbrella. But yeah, just gonna go right into here and we're just gonna juggle him and a DOD combo to finish and build the heat. And that pretty much takes him out, uh, outright. We don't really have to do too much there. Yeah, it's the I, I was the same strat all the way through. Yup. Next, we get my favorite shoe knife man. Just a great name. And at this point, just gonna use up a little bit of healing, so this way we can top ourselves off. Make sure we don't have to run back through anything by dying. And uh, Shoe Knife Man goes down easily. And next will be the Knife Caltrops Man. See, I would be worried about having Shoe Knife shoes, okay? I feel like if you kick the wrong way and you get stuck inside of something, you could twist your ankle real badly. I cross my legs a lot, so I feel like I would just, if, if the knife comes out, I would just stab my other foot. I kick the back of seats often, so I would feel bad if I just like was kicking the seat and all of a sudden the knife ejected. And now somebody is just like wounded and like, what the heck? Yeah, I probably go to the hospital a lot because I um, also cross my legs or just, uh, you know, sit in an awkward position sometimes. So definitely this knife would be stabbing me in the thigh constantly. And here comes another trip to the hospital. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be finding yourself next to these people as well because they are also going to the hospital. <laughs> At least I'll have health insurance. <laughs> and now we have Disc Man. And um, yeah, he's, he's ready. He's also tanky. Yeah. But just like all the rest, we're going to use the same strats we did last time. We're going to do a little bit of juggling. Uh, do some weapon heavy attacks and uh, same thing we've been doing for the others and he'll go down relatively quickly now one of my favorite things is though I, st I still think this is kind of a little bit off topic but still relevant to the series I really love Majima has a hot knife yeah. and how just I don't know. That is one of my favorite things. When I learned about that, I was obsessed with that. Now, what do you mean by hot knife as someone who's never played any of the Yakuza games? Like a, like a flaming hot knife. Mm, okay. And that's just his go-to weapon? It's one of them. It's one of the ones he's more <laughs> known for. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, here we go. So now we're going to be taking on Yoshim or Yoshimura. And uh, this is essentially our main boss for this, if memory serves correct. 
And, uh, yep, just gotta focus him down and use Tarners where needed to heal up. And from there, we should be good. Not too hard to do, just a DoD combo and um, Agent EX mode. And that pretty much takes him down relatively quickly. And then we just take out the rest of the enemies. And this should be an easy wrap up to Chapter 1. I do have a question. Why is... I believe they're talking about Kiryu. Mm -hmm. uh, why is he red sometimes and blue others when you're fighting? So there is this uh, canonical event called Heat. Uh, you can also call it Kiwami or Extreme, which means extreme. Uh, and it's been confirmed that this terrifying aura that they see is, is canon. That's just them powering up or, as they like to say, feel the heat. <laughs> Just think about it like you would JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Dragon Ball. Yeah. It's a, it, it's that terrifying emanating aura that only certain characters in the world seem to have. I just love that that's a thing that they just threw in. Like, Yakuza's one of those series that's just so random. But anyway, I will let this set up real quick. And now we find ourselves in Sotenbori and we are finding Akame, which means we're going to be doing more shopping, a little bit of upgrade, so this way we can keep our character up to date. And we're also going to be grabbing some items that are going to allow us to sell later on, such as a gold plate. And um, yeah, and then upgrading our attack a little bit later, like I said. Um, but we can also grab some collectible items along the way while talking to some of the characters. We're going to be talking to a homeless man in a little bit here. And from there, We'll be taking a taxi. So all the travel in one go. Got a couple things on the list. And uh, yeah. Now, my favorite thing about this game, and I think one of the things that a lot of people love about this, is how dense the world of Yakuza is, but how flashy it looks. It almost gets that 1980s, 1990s red light district vibe. And um, it does a really great job of flashy lights, uh, hole in the wall stores and more and I just I've always loved that about these games is that they really know how to present themselves which is what the Yakuza are about too is the flashy presentation whoa here you started floating okay <laughs> that's the dragon engine for you oh you know, okay, just, okay. you know it's a little slip and slide a shimmy or two now here goes my sh favorite character right here Akame I like to think <laughs> of her as Kiryu's uh, pimp because he goes to her place, sleeps on her couch, does work for her. He's pretty much just going around being a menace and she's making him do this. He's, well, he's he volunteered. He was not voluntold. Like, voluntold. <laughs> I don't know about that. Do you like actually actively want to live on someone's couch? That's not even like we don't even see if this is like a futon type of couch. And you know his what? leather, too, it's not comfortable. You know what? If you're wearing sweatpants, it's comfortable. If you're not, and you're just going briefs only, maybe not. Let's see. Kitty never changes his outfits. I'm assuming he only sleeps in his suit as well. <laughs> you don't know maybe that. Maybe the suits are pajama grade. Maybe. Maybe he has a pajama suit that looks exactly like. Taylor, just for sleeping. <laughs> Sometimes oh the enemies can uh, fill themselves and start to juke me whenever I try to punch them or block. So what do you do when that happens? Do you have a fix for that that can get around the enemy AI? Um, If you're playing as casually, uh, if you're using DOD style, you can actually hold down square and uh, Kiryu will dip into his uh, B style just a little bit. He just swings his arms around with these like giant wide punches is really nice. And they break guard so easily. Thank you for explaining. And just to remind you all of what DoD is, DoD is Dragon of Dojima style. And that is what Pop is using for a wide variety of their combat Welcome maneuvers within Dojima. here. We have these uh, group of Yakuza that were harassing homeless people scamming them these were the welfare thieves if memory serves correct yep and uh yeah pretty much this one is just focusing on boss and then the other enemies uh, this way you can just take out the main offender and uh there you go luckily this is just dod comboing and 
killing anyone who's alive at the end or hurting anyone who's alive at the <laughs> end. Sorry, we don't kill in this house. <laughs> I don't know, Kiryu's a secret agent. Maybe he does kill now. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that he has to go to the cemetery for all his victims. Oh, oh. oh. We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next uh, we have the leveling time and we're going to have some quests we have to do as well. Um, on top of that, we get to go to the pawn shop and the smoke shop. And we're going to be doing a quest for somebody named Mizorogi and an investigation quest. And then after that, we'll have a couple other things. Uh, we're going to be doing a castle pregame, which will be getting us ready for this area called the Colosseum, which we'll be dealing with later, and that will lead into more. But we'll get to that. I'm jumping ahead of myself. You're, you're really excited. All right. <laughs> the, I, the, the shopping isn't as entertaining, you know? You just see me picking up stuff. This, this uh, unhoused man is asking for some sake. Well, no unhoused man. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't no who doesn't has. like a good shopping trip? That's all I you know. Depends, am I going with people or not? Touché. Also, is the shopping for necessities or is it, you know, treat myself? No, we're talking about treat yourself. Oh, if it's treat myself, heck yeah, I'm going in forty dollars and I'm coming out with a couple games. Hey. <laughs> a game for forty dollars? Man. In this economy? I miss <laughs> I miss those days. <laughs> Listen, I can dream. I can dream. <laughs> <laughs> so a fun fact, you can skip the mini games and most of the games and not have to worry about doing them if you're just trying to go straight to the story. I typically do that on our first time playthrough uh, when I just want story because people like to spoil and ruin the fun for others. And um, that's why we appreciate you. Yeah. Now, okay, let me ask, what is your favorite item to buy in a Yakuza game, regardless of speedrunning intent or just playing through the game. Do you have an item that exists in any of the games that you just love because it's there and because it's quirky? Oh, that's a good question. Um, okay, so it's not a favorite item. It was just really funny when I found out that it was being sold in the stores, but they have like Mountain Dew and Pe uh, Pepsi. And one of my friends uh, really loves drinking Pepsi. So when I when I found it in the store, I was like, Hey, look, I got Pepsi. <laughs> oh, my God. It's always funny seeing something that you know, and you're like, oh, my God, that's a real thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes like they have billboards up if memory serves correctly. And there's other times where you'll just find like a certain brand of noodle that, you know, or even actors who, you know, who you don't expect to be in the game. One, one of my yeah. favorite things is the uh, Sega Arcade that you generally find in a lot of Yakuza games where they'll have demos, or not even demos, just actual playable games that they've previously done. And um, it can be a nice experience popping in there and seeing some of the merch that they actually have. Now, where are we at this point? Are we still on the Mizorogi quest? Uh, we're doing the investigation quest, which is uh, right before we do the pawn shop quest with uh, Mizorogi. Mm. That, uh, Kame has access to do, but I'm picking up locker keys along the way. We're gonna need these these items. Those items are needed. What, what I enjoy Oh, no. sorry. No, no. What no. I enjoy most about watching um this speedrun is just looking at the environment because I lived in Japan for a year. So looking at this just makes me feel like I'm going down a trip down nostalgia, especially seeing the karaoke building in the background, Joy Sound, one of the best karaoke franchises, and it makes me sad that we don't get to see karaoke in the run. I'll play karaoke now, just for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, considering you've been to Japan, I know this is heavily inspired by parts of Japan. How accurate would you say it is having been there? Uh, would you say this is to like something like what you would see in a very urban Japan? I, I feel like I would not see a Kiryu running down the street beating up homeless people, <laughs> but um, pretty much everything else feels pretty like natural. Now, when so you gotta fight a homeless person, 
<laughs> You're just gonna not provide the evidence. I just gotta stand here, accusedly. I, mean, I, I, I think uh, if I think Namu meant that you beat those dudes so bad that you beat the wealth, the stability, <laughs> and everything else out of them. And that's how we gained infinite wealth. <laughs> <laughs> we broke the system, kids. <laughs> we did it. Now, if I had to think of a favorite cursed items, uh, back when they had it to where you could get items out of the drink <laughs> machines, they used to have these myst uh, mystery drinks, and they would either... Uh, do nothing or harm you uh, exponentially. Oh my god. Like there was one where I drank it and Kiri was coughing for his life because he lost 90% of his HP. 90%? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he drank some rotten kimchi or something. I'm not even sure how that would work. Don't do that. I'll try this at home, kids. Don't don't try it at home. What picking up signs to be alcoholics in the street on um, streets? Oh, um, I don't think he's an alcoholic. He might have just been having a rough day. He was surrounded by like twenty bottles at that point. I think that's more than a rough day. <laughs> Talk, talking about rough days. Let's talk about a character, one of my favorites, Mister Shakedown. Oh my God, I think that's his name. That is a character in these games that terrifies me. He wanders around and waits till you have lots of money. If you encounter him and he beats you, he will shake you down for your oh, money. Oh, no. Yeah. The very dangerous individual. Now, is he in this game? No. Thank God. Is he, like, super powerful? Um, it, it depends on what difficulty you're playing uh, Zero on. He uh, he's like if you took the Hulk and the Juggernaut and combined them into a realistic person. Not the Huggernaut. Huggernaut <laughs> 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 is that is that what I'm hearing? The Huggernaut. Yes. That is an yeah. interesting name. Yeah, the Huggernaut. I just imagine as this like massive two percent body has no neck, just like mountain of a dude that just <laughs> runs around and hugs people. Like you're running from him, and he's like, and just like grabs and hugs you, and then just walks off. That's it. So you're talking about Harvey Neckdent from the Batman Telltale. Pretty games. much. Gotcha. Oh my god! Now that is one thing I would like to experience in Japan is the vending machines. I would love to experience all the vending machines because I heard they have them everywhere. Apparently, they there's really one with do. like a pizza. There I'm is. Sorry, yes, what? it can make a pizza for yeah. you. It's a vending machine that um, you can choose what type of piece you want, and it'll make it for you in the vending machine. That's wild. Oh my god. There's Ooh. also a time where in Harajuku, I came across a vending machine selling panties. But I mean, that is Japan. It checks yeah, I was, out. I was about mm -hmm. to say something, but I, I have to specify that I'm only referring to the pizza machine. Because um, <laughs> I was gonna say, get with the times, America, you coward. But yeah, no, I just I am only talking about the pizza machine. <laughs> oh, you know it's weird because I didn't consider the fact that Japan does have pizza, but I would totally be down for that in America. Their pizza is so good, like um. They they really love corn for some reason. So um, a lot of the pieces has corn on it, but they also have a lot of flavors that you wouldn't even think about. There is one flavor that Domino's had where uh, the sauce is Alfredo sauce and it's shrimp and crab meat on it. And it's so, so delicious. And it's not something Domino will ever think about doing here in America. Now, real quick, catching us up on the game real quick, we just upgraded some skills, including gear slot two, quick step and face stomp. And this is all a pregame or what is giving me the next part, the castle, uh, or rather the Colosseum in this case. And uh, this is going to set up for some um, for some fights where we're going to be facing uh, a couple notable characters, you know, some uh, maybe familiar, but not really looking characters, sorry. Um, and uh, including fake Kiryu, one of my favorite things I've ever had the chance to read. <laughs> <laughs> It will be an interesting thing to see in real time to you. Oh boy. 
Uh, but the first one we have is, I believe this is Watase, yeah. and uh, or fake Watase in this case. And uh, we're just going to be using Heat and EX for phase changes, and that's pretty much it in this case. Um, but right after, we'll continue on, and the next battle will be fake Kiryu. And he's out of here. I hate that he still did the uh, unblockable attack anyway. You can just let me one-tap you to the ground. I'm sorry, I can't do that. You just see, though, Watase was not giving up. He was just, I am the real Watase. <laughs> this is fake here, you. I don't know. He looks pretty real to me. Uh, is that what you really believe? I don't know. Let's get a close-up on that face. I think we're going to need to put some fists into that to see. <laughs> I will say he does have the suit on point, and that's not something a lot of people could pull off. Yeah, because they've had plenty of fake Kiryu's in the other games. You know, a couple of the other games. See, I'm going to be totally real with you. I'm still going through Like a Dragon. Like, I really need to finish that game. But Someone said Pizza Vending oh. Machines exist in the U.S., and I need them to drop that Addy because, like, I need to. Yeah. I need to see this pizza vending machine in America. Oh God, yeah, he is not cure you. No, no. That's what he gets. He doesn't for have that square dragon. jawline in the right way. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's a great point. You know, the facial structure definitely gives it away. But well, now it does. And next, we've got fake Goda. Now this is going to be a couple phases. We're gonna have a DoD combo phase for phase one and then we're gonna go a bit katana heavy on the next part uh as well as heat for the phase change um so we got a couple things that we're gonna be doing here and uh why does does this dude play the triangle he doesn't use it as an instrument he abuses it god darn it you could have been something musical and magical but you chose to beat this he gave us a katana though Hey, look, Namu, it's your favorite part. It's tiger time. Yeah. Cream and sugar. Worst ways to go. See, it. See, they could have done a Sonic thing here. They could have called it cream and cheese. Oh. That's okay. That's Miss opportunity, candy. Sega. Also, don't call PETA because I don't care what Pop says. He is stabbing <laughs> these tigers with a katana. Those, are, those just, are dead. Those are nap stabs. <laughs> nap stabs. <laughs> It's okay. They're fine. It was just, it, it's a, it's a plastic katana. It just hit them on the brain spot. They'll be back up in a couple hours. <laughs> now, like I said before, we're just going to do some DOD combos and uh, heat for this. So we shouldn't have too much trouble in this part. <clears throat> oh, he's giving us a hug. That's cute. That was very cute. The thing I hate about this heat action is that uh, you have to sprint into it. And if they dodge, it's just like, you lose the chance. All right, good night, Ryuji. A pow. Now we're gonna deal with the next best thing. After sending him in a taxi to the hospital, we ourselves are going to go taxi time, the Sotenbori set piece, the Omi Alliance. And we're gonna be facing off first against Agent EX or X. I, I don't know how this one's pronounced, but we're going to call it X. That's actually and, the move uh, I'm using. I don't know. Oh, sorry, I don't know I the, the names of the individual people like that. I try to note it down as best as I can. Oh. I just typically give them nicknames like I did with the agents because they all have actual names mm -hmm. like the Umbrella my Man. Yeah. <laughs> and my apologies. The first fight we're doing is Sakuma. I read the wrong thing here, but what I meant to say is Agent EX and Firefly is going to be our best friends during these next couple parts. We're going to be using them a lot. And uh, yeah, from here, we'll just continue on and uh, helicopter time. Okay, so the scooter, though, the scooter is my favorite weapon to use against enemies in a Yakuza game. Picking up an entire scooter to attack somebody, that is your warning right there. That's amazing. Absolutely. Like, if I saw somebody pick up an entire motorized scooter, I'd be out. <clears throat> I would just cease to exist at that point, to be honest. Yep. Just lights a cigarette. Screw it. It's a bomb. I No, please explain to me how no one dies from that. They're okay. 
third degree, third degree burns. Uh, they can <laughs> put uh, what's it called? Eucalyptus oil or something on it. Be fine. Yeah, it's, it's firework. Fine. Flashbang. That's yeah. It. Wow. <clears throat> Namu okay. just does not believe us at all. Mm -hmm. It's okay. No, uh, it's fine. Right. I, I understand. So Sakuma's coming out first, and we're gonna grab that chair, give him a nice little beat down so he can sit in it, and uh, we're gonna make sure we cancel that phase change. And there he goes, down for a nap. I might have been there a little aggressive chair. with those punches. I was just trying to make sure he didn't do the thing. You didn't want that phase change? Yeah, I, I, I was not trying to see red. Oh, the next fight we're going to do is the Yao fight. And uh, once again, just clearing the warehouse. But once again, our consistency here is just heavy attacks all day. They deal tons of damage. They deal with enemies really quickly and allow us to reduce the amount of time we're spending in these rooms in these fights. I I'd like say to imagine the, uh, the janitor that comes in the next morning to clean this all up, like on all the broken <laughs> tables and chairs. You can only wonder what happened. What janitor? I quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like At the that janitor point... would just have to hear the name Kiryu. He would be like, all right, I retire. Right. You know what? Or the better theory, there's one janitor. Whenever Kiryu goes someplace, they call that guy and they're like, hey, we've got a big job for you. He's like, Kiryu again? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Yao is down. And pretty much all these fights are just going to be heat actions to cancel their phase changes and using heavy objects to pretty much take everyone out who we see. My only question is, can you pick up the vending machine? No. Boo. Which makes me sad because we've game. never been able to do it in a game. Fun fact, you can also punch the furniture for heat. There you go. Stop being cowards. Let us throw a vending machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now we get Kubota. So that's our next one, and uh, he's destroying our heavy furniture. God darn it! We're gonna, it's okay. We're I grabbed a, I grabbed that. a plan on the way in. <laughs> the there was nobody ever suspects the <laughs> No one, no one ever expects to uh, get smacked with a plant midway. No, no one does. I could make a, uh, I could make a the night you say knee joke here. Bring us a shrubbery. Well, you bought him a shrubbery and he went down. <laughs> so I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta point something out. Now, Pop said earlier, oh, I may have been a little too aggressive with the punches. Oh, yeah. What, what was the previous 37 minutes that you just like? I was, I was punching him while he was already down. He was, all, he was already, the fight was already over and the punches were still going. That's, that's, that's what I meant. <laughs> now, Ukita is a coward. He uses a gun, so we're just going to smack him with the weight of the world, and he's going to go down. Lights out. Goodbye. And we're on to the next fight, which is, uh, at this point, uh, a sake break, and then we get ready for Saruno. Um, but pretty much this is going to consist of DoD combos and HDX for the phase change, if possible, or we'll use it to finish out the fight. Um, but that's going to be our set piece boss now that we've gotten through all the others. And uh, then it'll be time for Soten Bori. Uh, but, Saruno, you've met your maker. It looks like a Bloodborne weapon. It, it does. does. Oh my god, Yakuza Bloodborne one. Collab win. <clears throat> I'm here for it. Can you imagine just running around in Bloodborne dressed as Kiryu? That would like, be hilarious. You can buy the outfit <laughs> in the game. That would be absolutely hilarious. Just walking around in a suit. And and as you get better armor, you end up just getting better suits. They're all fashion <laughs> though. Like they don't do anything. They just look cool. You know what? Yakuza's a Yakuza's a Souls game. I'll take no questions. It's not actually, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, though, it, it takes real brass to come at somebody with a hot poker, which is like one of the most unbalanced weapons ever. If you've actually ever held a fire poker in your life or a brand, those things are top heavy. 
My he chose to wield that with a really unwieldy blade. My head cannon is that he grills a lot. That's why he's able to mm. use it as a weapon. It's the only the thing that makes just, sense. He just burns the patties. I'm never going to his barbecues. Well, no, it it, it has his uh, his insignia. So that way, when you're eating a burger, you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. You lift the bun and you see, boom, you know who made it. It's like, oh yes, Saruno's burgers, my favorite. <laughs> And Saruno's burger just got whopped. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's time to go to Burger King because we're getting whoppers, kids. Now, next is going to be the request for a comic. We're going to be going to Sotenbori, and then we'll be continuing a little bit more hassle time, a little bit of grind, a little bit of a. Uh, a little bit of fights and a couple of upgrades to our heat as well as we continue on. Um, but otherwise, that pretty much, I wouldn't say that clears it out, but that's thats like our big boss fight right there for everything. And uh, yep, we get to close out chapter two and on to chapter three we'll go in just a little bit. They force you to look at pocket circuit in this game. You don't even have to ask if it's in the game. <laughs> yeah, kids, it's right here. Oh my god, was Pocket Circuit that one mini game? Yeah. It's it's in this one and it's I might get flamed for this, but personally I like Pocket Circuit a lot better in Gaiden than in Zero. Just, I remember I loved it in Zero, but I found it to be a little bit not annoying, just tedious at times. I can see that. I, I still think my favorite thing to do in a Yakuza game is Yakuza Zero's karaoke. Like, legit, the videos in that one just go so hard. Plus, 24-hour Cinderella Man, you just can't beat that. I mean, the cut-ins in, in the middle of karaoke are just over the top and really good overall in, in any of the games. They are. There's not a bad one at all, like no. in general. I just, I love Yakuza Zeros. The way they put things in. It's super good. I will say though, Baka Mitai in Like a Dragon probably has one of my favorite renditions by uh, Nanba, I think it was. Yeah. I, I love that rendition. Now, uh... Infinite Wealth has added a new favorite karaoke, uh, karaoke song for me because I'm a huge fan of City Pop as well, and they have a City Pop track in there, Honolulu Lights. Mm. It's really good. Yes. Japanese City Pop is so good. Oh. And so now I believe we're on the rear quest for Akame? Not, well, no. not quite. We just, uh... Went back to Mizurogi for our uh, jet boots, as I like to call them. We get our, our nice the little serpent. Yeah, we get the willies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's my favorite. The uh, yeah, that's Namu's favorite uh, ability in this game is just me being able to use the willies. I never got to have willies when I was a kid, so I'm living what? vicariously to cure you now. Oh, wow. No, yeah, my mom I didn't want me that. to. <laughs> I never got to have wheelies either, but it's partially because I lived in an area that was extremely hilly and my grandmother thought I'd wheel myself right in the traffic and into a wheelchair. So props on her for being smart because I definitely would have. That's absolutely fair. But wheelies are a blast. They are. Give me a good old hammerhead. Nice pompadour. I was gonna say the only pompadour I've seen like that is in a JoJo's manga. <laughs> oh my god! If I could get him in time, I'm misjudged. But also, if you're wondering why Kiryu is suffering, uh, I have a glass cannon build. But even though so you're just going for damage, yeah, just pure damage. Yeah, if they touch me too much, I might die. <laughs> and that's why we have Turners, everyone. Now, 
In this game, do you have a favorite quest that you would do normally that occurs at any point in the game? Uh, story or sub story? Uh, sub story. My favorite sub story was, uh, it was a Dragon Ball uh, reference. I won't go into too much detail just in case someone else hasn't done it. I've platted the game, so, um, yeah, doing that story was, was great. It was the perfect Dragon Ball reference. <clears throat> I was extremely satisfied. The quest title can throw you off a little bit because it's just like, find seven gold balls. I'm just like, this is oddly specific. <laughs> we got seven Dragon Balls and seven Chaos Emeralds. Which one do you want? <laughs> I think the most impressive thing about these games is the amount of textures that they use no matter what building you go into. The carpets, the wood, the marble on the floor. Like it's all very impressive and well put together in a way that doesn't feel like it stands out too much. And that has always surprised me with the Yakuza games. More so going into the story is just how well they all fit. Everything fits into one cohesive mesh. So friendly fire is a thing, as you can see, where um <laughs> Just ruined I, the whole yeah, group. Yeah, I definitely got mollywopped by uh, my friend with the sledgehammer. I don't have to talk about it. So my boomer brain turned on and I didn't have heat when I came in. We're just gonna throw hands. Just, just listen, they came in for hands day. They're, they are getting the hands. And, uh, I'm gonna stay away from that man. Now, quick question, just so that way, anybody who's not aware, why can't you activate your heat if you don't do it when you come in the room? Uh, it pulls up a prompt that forces you to leave out the Coliseum. So you can't access the menu at all. You're just, you're just here. Also, one thing I'll take the chance to talk about now is, in this game, one of the things you've been hearing me refer to and I didn't explain it earlier, was phase changes. But um, all bosses are going to have a point in their uh, in their battle where essentially they will trigger a move that can only be parried, and you can essentially break this phase change with heat actions, which is one of the reasons why heat actions are so incredible in this, is they allow us to kind of break through that and just continue the flow of battle and just keep punching. So that is an extremely helpful thing. But... uh. I'm just shocked how many enemies are in this in this arena. There's so many. <laughs> there's a reason why it's called Hell Team Rumble. At least there's no Hell House in this one. Oh, there is. <laughs> oh, no. But you don't encounter it in the speedrun, thank God. See, when you hit said Hell House in, in the Coliseum, my mind goes straight to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Exactly what I was referring to. <laughs> exactly. So, Papa, I do have a question. What <clears throat> made you want to learn to speedrun this one? Um, well, I've been like speedrunning and practicing the other ones for a while. I wanted to uh, do this one specifically because of uh, it's one of the main ones where uh, using a heat action is possible without losing any time. Because heat actions are great. They're flashy. They look good. <clears throat> and the fact that so, uh, I can clear so many bosses using a, a disrespectful heat action, it just made me smile a little bit. <laughs> so tech-wise, it's much faster than most of the other Yakuza yeah. games. Now, do you have a favorite Yakuza game that you like to speedrun when you're uh, running these, or is this your favorite? Uh, so far, in terms of... Uh, and Kiryu's arc, this one would probably be my favorite. If you had any runner-ups, what do you think would be your second favorite? And do you have any particular reasons why that one would be your favorite? Um, <clears throat> it would be between Kiwami 2 or 6 for me, because those are those were the games where I, I first started practicing speedrunning the games. Oh, those two.
Um, out of Ichiban's games, my favorite would right now my favorite is Infinite Wealth, only because grinding is infinitely better. Do you think you'll speed run that in the future? Yeah, I've been trying to practice uh, or build my own route based on uh, my first run, because like I said before, my first time playthrough, I just I go straight to the story. Um, and I, I would take mental notes on like <clears throat> things that worked or things that didn't work in certain fights. I, uh, I currently have three save files with that now, excluding the first time. So. Now, last question about it. What is the longest Yakuza game for you personally to speedrun, and how long five. is a run like that? Five? Five and how long seven five are, are pretty long. Um, five for me, when I first did it, it took me at least seven hours. I wanted to cry. <laughs> seven. Oh my god. Ooh, that seems like if you make a mistake, is there anything that can just completely kill a run? Yeah, there are a couple of things. A couple of different uh, boss fights uh, boss fights for me that could kill a run, but I remember the first time I practiced it, I, I thought I was doing something wrong, and then I went and looked at leaderboards. I'm like, okay, so this is a really long game, and I'm not just, you know, bad at speedrunning, because I, I read it, I was just like, oh my god, five is taking so long, I don't think I can... I can speed run this and I, I like this game because it has the most mini games. I wanted to cry. And you can ask anyone from my community. Anytime we do a uh, so when a new mainline game comes out, usually what I'll do is I'll uh, rerun the entire franchise, uh, all of the mainline games. And every time we get to five, I'm just like, guys, I I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how did you dis like? How did you come up with your route for this game? Did you have anything that you had to research, or did you just kind of find your own way through and reference what other people have done uh, for this game? I mainly found my own way. Uh, eventually, when I um, when I actually started practicing for submitting for UBF. I was like, okay, what can I do to, to clean this up? Because at the time, before I had submitted uh, the video, my PB was around an hour and 58 minutes. But okay, what can I do to clean this up? So I just went in and watched, uh, watched the runs that were on the leaderboard. Oh, that's right, we have that's the... That's a good uh, way to learn. Absolutely. No. And it's so funny you said that, like, you know, Yakuza 5 is such a long game to speedrun in. Like, you know, we as streamers and content creators could sit, you know, down and stream for like 12 hours or something. <laughs> but <laughs> God forbid there's a speedrun that's 12 hours. No, thank you. I could play different games for 12 hours, but just one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It better be the first time. <laughs> I, I remember my first time going to Yakuza game was Yakuza 0. And I remember it took me like... 80 hours to get through and I was like oh my god like I can't even imagine 100 percenting and at the time I had a friend who was going through it and she told me she was like yeah it took me like 180 hours to 100 percent this and I was just sitting here like how do people do it and then I got introduced to the speedrunning community through like Froob and a few other people for Yakuza and I was amazed to see how quick people had gotten the times down on so many of these it ridiculous how much content is in these games let alone the fact that you've managed to make a route that you've been able to take down in in terms of how much time there is now at this point we're fighting yoshimura and uh this is just going to be uh once again dod combos the finish as most others and just agent ex mode and um in just a little bit it'll be lights out That ends That's chapter probably two. one of the most dramatic, dramatic yells I've heard so far. You've never just heard someone cry for their life? No, what, yes. <laughs> and now we're on chapter three. I think you mean cry for naps. <laughs> That's what my baby cousin's gonna sound like. <laughs> 
That's what I sound like. <laughs> you after work? <clears throat> Me during work. <laughs> Valid. Now, for this next part, we're going to be getting right on into it. And we are going to be starting with a comic quest for gold rank. Uh, seeking some advice, recruiting the homeless, Yamanaka, and uh, even going for the strongest convenience store clerk. And then, of course, Pop, you one of your favorites, the Golden Samurai. Oh. So what do we do if we see the Golden <clears throat> Samurai? Square up. We square up. It's on, it's on site. Go. This now, Golden Samurai is just minding his business, and here comes Kiryu out of okay, nowhere but when in he, the streets of Osaka. When he sees me... He yells and charges at me. That's how this works. <laughs> now, can you explain for chat who is the Golden Samurai and this why should right you? That that was perfect timing. Okay. Convenient. Very lucky because he could be anywhere. My dude literally just has a katana, and you're destroying this man with a cone. Two cones at that. You know, just, uh, just man nice, never saw this coming. A nice plastic sword. It's shaped a little weird, but it works. <laughs> a nice plastic sword. Ka tink -ka tink When it hits the I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, that's no plastic sword. That's a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> this, whole, this whole last 30 seconds has just been fantastic. <laughs> Who's the golden samurai? You. And it's charged. <laughs> And Kitty just came in and just ended that man's whole career. Like, he's working at a convenience store, okay? Yes, I'd thank you. I'd let Kiryu fight my manager. manager. I'd let him you fight my what? manager. You know what? If that manager was being a jerk, they deserve it. And now we get to fight the store clerk. If I recall correctly, we do beat him up because he's a jerk. Like I said, Kiryu doesn't fight anybody who doesn't deserve it. I've never seen Kiryu ever attack somebody in these games who was a good person. So, if you think you're somebody who Kiryu would fight, you're probably not a good person. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Kiryu. a life motto to live by. Am I a good person? <laughs> just ask yourself, would Kiryu fight you? No longer do phrases like, what would Gandhi or what would Jesus do? It's, would Kiryu fight you? <laughs> WWKD, what would Kiryu do? <laughs> The new division of the WWE, right? WWKD. <laughs> now, at this point, we're going to the park and we're going to beat up Yamanaka. Not sure what he did, but he deserves it, probably. He has, this, just... he has this beat him up challenge, which he, he loses. Nothing. He loses miserably, unfortunately. Spoiler alert. Isn't there a phrase about a short man with a big stick? Like, I feel like I feel like that just happened. We just watched that beatdown happening, and unfortunately, that that did not serve him well. No. And next just, week, go on. It's just it's just interesting from an outside perspective. These three quests: seeking advice, recruit homeless Yamanaka, um, Sean convenience store clerk, go to Samurai. Like he's just going around beating up people to recruit them. <laughs> yes. I mean, isn't that how all tournament arcs in anime go? You're not wrong. <laughs> that is a good point. <laughs> that is a really good point. I never really thought about you it. Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> yep, literally. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Hunter, wow, you're really strong. Can you Hunter, join Hunter, me? Right. <laughs> but so that was our burger join. And then we're going to go to the bridge, skip some dialogue, and taxi it up to fight Otomo with uh, some more DOD combos. And then we're going to do another fight with Kusano for some extra DOD combo because who doesn't love DOD? Mm. DOD Those just sounds like an abbreviation for uh, for an energy drink. I could, I mean, listen, the name's Dragons of Dojima. That sounds like an energy drink. I'd take it. Let's get sponsored. Are you tired of always being tired? Just randomly in the middle of anything you're doing? Are you tired of your manager just telling you you can't get off? Drink some Dragons of Dojima. It'll give you wings and claws and, well, actually scales too. <laughs> it might even turn you into Kiryu-san. <laughs> Drink not sponsored by Kiryu-san. 
Where's our Where's our really fast person doing the little bits that it does none of that? Mm. <laughs> or the ones that talk about drink is you cancer, brain cancer, <laughs> stomach cancer, <laughs> may cause indigestion. This drink is not sponsored by and does not give you wings, does not give you claws, and also may cause stomach ulcers, issues, and maybe other diseases. I don't know. <laughs> Please seek your doctor for um, questions first. And uh, more citizens. More citizens. More citizens. Now, right now, we're on our way to defeat Kusano. And uh, yeah, he's he's not going to have a good time. One punch. He's grabbing his stomach. He just needs some ginger ale. He'll be all right. <laughs> I don't know if you got his stomach or his ribs. He might need to go to a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they have room. Mm, I know with everyone they're sending and what, how many hours has this been? Mm hmm. Bring up an interesting point. It. Good thing you're going all around the city, you know, got to distribute the hospital wealth. <laughs> Does that mean that the infinite wealth was referring to the hospitals and not our protagonist? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> A good old drink link. Now, I do have a question. Do you normally play Yakuza games in Japanese dub? Yes. Sometimes I'll play them in English, but uh, I keep them in Japanese to keep myself fresh on uh, the language myself as someone who, who speaks it. Now, further question on that. I know some speedruns are better when done in um, English or Japanese because of the load times. And yes. Japanese usually has less characters based on hiragana, katakana, and the kanji that are used within. So does that apply for Yakuza games? And are there different categories for the different languages? Um, from what I recall, there's no categories for the languages, but... And Froob can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but... I believe that the um, English dubs, uh, because the sound is linked by frames, the English dub actually runs a little bit slower. You gotcha. Thank you for the info. Also, we just upgraded Kiwami Attack Times 2, Max Heat Gauge, and Essence of Raging Dragon, and Ultimate Essence as well. Giving ourselves a little bit more for this next one, which is going to be the Kijin Clan Clash, which will lead to our chapter and afterwards. And essentially, we're going to be using Agent Style plus Firefly um, because it's our best friend and we love it. And um, essentially, we're going to be fighting these people uh, to fulfill their casino debts. Then we'll have a Fukunage fight, which will be more fun of heat mode, of course. Firefly and Jet Boots, our favorite wheelies. Um, and then later we'll have employees and even clown mask mobs. You didn't know you needed to see it, but we got it. If you and, do have uh, a fear of clowns... Start preparing to walk away for a little bit. Yes, trigger warning. If you have a phobia of clowns, I do actually have I a would, phobia I of would, clowns. I, so I, will step I do out too. For that. <laughs> I won't step out. It's not that bad, but I do too have a fear of clowns. And Froob actually has a comment on this as well. English is faster because boss intros are skippable. Um, oh, I didn't so know. So they're saying it's the opposite. And the old judgment problem solution only by 20 or 30 seconds, though. So there you go, chat. So it's the opposite in this. English is quicker, Japanese is slower on that. Thank you for the clarification. I'm mainly on console. <laughs> and also for this area, the boss of this area is going to be Nishitani and that'll yes. be the similar DOD heat mode plus the ultimate essence spam or, uh, or uh, Namu's favorite character, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know anything about him, but his suit is fire. You just like him for the suit. It's okay. My dude did a whole Spider-Man. Oh, no, they're dead. No, they're no. dead. <laughs> they got shot. He is a boomer. He has no idea how to go for the vital organs. They're dead. That was an arm, a leg, and another arm. Yeah, Someone we'll call a doctor, but not the curator. <laughs> you ever hear the saying of it's dangerous to give a weapon to somebody who doesn't know how to use it more so than it is for somebody who knows how to use it? Yeah, those people are dead. 
I stand firm on the canon. The cannon is wrong. Non-lethal gunshots. Yeah, you know, just some rubber bullets. <laughs> you know what? Actually, they work for a casino. They might actually have some pretty good medical on site. I think what's funny about this part is the uh, we're on a boat, so this exists. And every time I'm here, I'm just like, all right, who thought it was a good idea to put this here? Listen, I'd say OSHA would not be happy, but I don't know if they have OSHA equivalent over there. But don't worry about it. And once again, heavies are our best friend. And boom, it's Donkey Kong time because we're barreling up. Nothing like a good barrel roll. Especially after mm. the phenomenal Donkey Kong run we saw earlier. Mm-hmm, that was a good run too. No, really, who in the dev team was like, you know what? Not only should we have a part where Kiri has to shimmy himself across, but also a plank. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's got all that buff and all that muscle. We don't know if that board can support that client or that. Uh, we don't know if that board can support all that. Right. I'm glad they didn't have toggle buttons like they do in Lost Judgment, where if you're going across something and something can go wrong, where you like fall off completely. Also, a little trigger warning for clowns. If you do not like clowns, now is your time to look away, and this should be done in probably like 30 seconds. Yes, from this point on, a lot of clown masks. All right, it looks like one of the uh, boys back there doesn't want to join in on the shenanigans, so I'm just going to wait till they run up. He's just being kind. He doesn't want to interrupt, okay? He's, he just wants to wait. He's just, he's just standing there. He's very kind. This is this is where people mess up. I'm sitting there at a meeting, <laughs> a morning meeting, and Kiryu start coming in and handing out pain. I'm gonna I'm gonna do like soccer. I'm just gonna hit the ground, act like I've been hit. <laughs> he don't he don't go and finish anybody off. He just whoops them until they stop moving. So immediately, like he ain't even. I'm all the way across the room. He kicking the door. I'm just collapsing. Mm. Now, after the clown mouse er, mask mob, we're gonna be doing Nishitani as I mentioned before. <laughs> And essentially, this is going to be DOD heat mode plus ultimate essence spam. And the thing is, he can flashbang, so it's going to be, uh, might be a little bit of brightness here and there. Just a warning. Uh, QTE, though, will always be X to win. So when that quick time event happens, it's going to be X. And that will be that way anytime you go through a run. After that, that's immediately a cut to chapter three. And, and we start chapter four, our next the last chapter. Definitely, um, between the explosions from the cigarettes and the flashbang that Nishitani does, uh, it's like flash warnings for uh, this portion. Yes. Because unfortunately, even if I get past, sometimes I get, you can skip past the flashbang completely and just knock him out. He still throws it because he hates me. Oh, wait, was this the clown mob? This yeah. Been the clown mob. This is the Whoops. clown mob. <laughs> Take everything I said and just push it. Why is that guy so muscular? I don't know, but it's not going to benefit him in any way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so take everything I said and just push it back one. Oh, you, just, you had some great predictions. How did I blow myself up? I mean, that that's what happens when you use cigarettes like that. And this is why smoking indoors is not safe. What I want to know is, does he just have like an entire package of those? Because he keeps pulling them out, and you've clearly used over a pack here. Don't smoke, kids. Um, I actually don't know. It has not been confirmed if uh, there's like a pack in his pocket or what. All right, uh, voice of reason real quick. Um, Again, I know there are so many, so many reasons why you would not fight... Uh, why you would not fight Kiryu. But on top of all those reasons, seeing Homeboy take a <laughs> sledgehammer to the back from Swole McSwolington without moving? I'm done. I quit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You got this, homie. He he, uh, he works out. I hear that really helps to reinforce. <clears throat> Once again, here is Nishitani. We're going to be coming up on this. Oh, he definitely came up on that knee. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a quick time nice. event should be X. 
I love these cutscenes so much. They are really cinematic. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, you can also block the flashbang, so uh, in the event that you don't have heat in this fight, just hold L1 and you won't have to worry about seeing the light, literally. Interesting, huh? Here we go again. He's about to get the crappy out of him. Oh my god, hold the it. of justice. Oh my god. He deserved it. It's like Captain Falcon flashbacks all over again. There we go, flashbang. Yep. Perfectly Mance blocked, is dead. and he is, he's not dead, all right? Oh, look at him, Shimmy, <laughs> hands His in the hand air. Is up. He is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was Nishitani. Out of chapter three, into this. You're definitely never going to see Nishitani again, definitely. And the first thing we're going to do once we get into chapter four is a uh, Akame quest, Taxi Time. And uh, also some cutscene oh. skips, of course, because this is Yakuza. And we'll jump right into Mizurogi's quest as well for a Yakuza fight for the agent style heat mode. So we got a little bit of a, a shopping list ahead, and uh, that's where we'll start here with taxi time. You know, I still think one of my favorite actual um, I, I won't go too far into it, but one of my favorite uh, cutscenes and quests in a Yakuza game is Yakuza Zero, where you are essentially, I won't spoil it too much, but essentially there's a quest with a, um, a woman who you have to feature uh, in the park, and there's these kids in the park, and it is just one of the funniest cutscenes. I can't spoil it because it would just ruin it, but if you know what I'm talking about in Yakuza Zero, I know exactly you know, which one you're it, talking about. That one has me in fits every time. I remember playing that on stream and not knowing what to do, and it is amazing. I think one of the funniest uh, sub stories from Zero was the one where Majima had to be someone's fake boyfriend. He's just like, you want me to what? Was that the one with the ramen shop? Yeah. Oh my god, that one is precious. And the girl was just like, can you be my fake boyfriend? And he's just like... You want me to what? And what? But one of the options is really funny. He's just like, "Sorry, I don't swing that way." I'm like, "Who did this?" <laughs> <laughs> what I love about the main characters is that they are all extremely wholesome. Like you're playing this game about yakuza, and it turns out that all the main characters are like really, really upstanding people. Just you know, they sometimes kill people. <laughs> Sorry, hurt people. I will say, only Daigo is, is on the, the roster for uh, having bodies. He shot multiple people, and they have been confirmed dead. Dang. Well, rest in peace to them. One of them doesn't deserve to rest in peace, but that's my personal opinion. Ooh. Dang, Pop coming out with the shade. Right. If you know, you know. Speaking of knowing about the series, what is like the order of playing these if one wants to get into them? Um, so if you don't have a uh, gameplay preference, you can start with uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon because that's Ichiban's arc. It's a completely different arc and it's a good introduction to the hilarity of the series. Um, or. My newer uh, Divergent folks, I always recommend that you play Kiwami first because Zero can be a, a bit of a time sink. And all of my friends that have like ADHD are just like, thank you for recommending Kiwami first because uh, it gets you straight into what it's all about. Zero is great for some backstory and it's also a good starting point, but don't start off with like three. I can confirm as somebody with ADHD that starting with Yakuza Zero wasn't the best idea. It was fun, but yeah, Kiwami is much, much quicker to get you in and playing and enjoying the game. Then go back to it. Now, if you want to see if you like the style of the game completely, you can also... Uh, I do have one friend. Uh, he got into the series by starting off with Judgment. 
And because he liked Judgment so much, he started playing the other games. Granted, it's a no, different cast, different story, but Dragon Engine all the same. I was going to say, that's a side story to what's happening in the Kiryu and Ichiban universe, correct? But it's yeah. still... It involves, like, loose characters to the series yeah. and references. Yep. And some of them make uh, cameo appearances in some of the games, or well, the games after Judgment and Lost Judgment take place. I love that coat. I call it the baby fat jacket. Is that dude just running into people and, like, not caring? Like, I just heard people scream. Absolutely. He's a menace. It's funny that him. you mentioned that because uh, in either four or five, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you actually get a trophy or achievement for knocking down a certain amount of people while running. <laughs> <laughs> so literally being a menace gets yeah. you a trophy. <laughs> There's also the one where in five, uh, you get a trophy if you get hit by a car. <laughs> Those are always my favorites. The ones where you have to go out of your way yeah. to do something silly to get a trophy. Uh, this game's silly trophy is actually uh, using the spider web gadget and slinging someone into uh, to some water <laughs> over the bridge. <laughs> I really actually want to see this now. I think I still have the video from when I got the trophy. I can, I can show it to you uh, once things wind down after this, of course. And so here we fight the Kijin Street Fight, which is going to be agent style plus heat mode, just the basics. And then after this, we're going to get into this entire sequence of debauchery, uh, golf. I promise it's way more interesting than it sounds. And, um, <laughs> well, you'll just have to wait and see. And then afterwards, we'll do another street fight, get into some more debauchery with some karaoke and go from there. Someone asked in chat, do you recommend watching some of the series online if you don't want to play all of the older Yakuza games? Um, that actually works. I have, I know a couple of people that did that because uh, it can definitely be jarring going from the old engine to the dragon engine. I know a lot of people complained about uh, Ishin in the remake, but a lot of people don't realize that originally Ishin came out after five. So you're still dealing with the things, well, how the engine was in in five. So if you want to watch through, um, you know, zero through five, and then jump right in with six, that's possible. Um, if you want to get a, used to like early Dragon Engine. Uh, you can also play uh, Kiwami 2, because Kiwami 2 and 6 are like those early Dragon Engine games, right up there with the uh, Judgment. The only other thing I'd add, can I add on to that? Yeah. All right. The only other thing I'd say is, with the a lot of the playthroughs you'll see, if you're going to watch them, just understand that they can be really long, but the community has done a great job of doing playthroughs with both segmentations of quests, like optional quests and also just main storyline and you can find pretty much all of it in a more digestible way if you just want to see what the cutscenes are or if you just want to see what the side quests are but i will say the side quests add a lot of characters so if you are going to watch it i would highly recommend watching the playthroughs with side quests in them because those really allow you to see who the character is outside of the normal yakuza storyline and i think it makes the game just a personal opinion. Yeah, but. there's one uh, person in particular, uh, Davillion. He does like a lot of different YouTube videos with the series. So if you're looking for someone that uh, has like an all mini games kind of video, I definitely recommend their channel. And we're back into the Kijin clan fight again, agent style again, heat mode uh, plus EX and uh, yeah, the cone of justice. He hit them so hard that rubber cone exploded. <laughs> I have questions. Oh, there's there's a lot of things that can happen, you know. Cones exploding, people getting run over by Heelys. Cigarettes. Explosive <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah. Dang, dude just lit up one, lit up another, man. The dude just does not stop. Don't try to set home. And they 
Can I have a place this big, please? We're actually in the uh, the grand. From uh... I noticed. This was a Yakuza Zero, right? Yep. Yep. For those of you who might notice, I believe if I get this wrong, please let me know. But this was uh, where we encounter Majima for the first time, and uh, some very rude guests. I think that is one of my favorite entrance scenes in a video game of all time is Majima's entrance to the series because you just don't quite realize what's happening yet. You know a main character's entered the room, but you don't quite understand how pivotal they'll be, especially if Zero is your first game. I will say one of my favorite character uh, interest, uh, interests uh, in this game would probably be Daigo. And I say this because he was being a brat to Kiryu, and I'm just like, oh, look at you giving Kiryu lip just to get knocked out. <laughs> It was the funniest thing ever. Oh, Daigo's just like, man, you can't tell me what to do, and then here you jacks him up. Hey, if you have a fair clown, <laughs> be careful. Clown in the background. Also, hey, look at that. More Kijun clan. You just blitz through that entire team. <laughs> <laughs> and then blows him up with a cigarette. Yeah, that's this Don't is just how you win at bowling. Down. Oh, man, I've been playing bowling wrong the entire time then. All right, see, I'm glad someone said it. So now everybody can stop. Everybody in my family can stop yelling at me that I've been <laughs> playing bowling the right way this whole time. What kind of bowling you guys playing? <laughs> we play for keeps. <laughs> <laughs> keeps of what? Teeth? I feel like playing this kind of bowling, I'm going to lose them. I love the pedestrians in the background. It's just like, yeah, get them. Yeah, they're a little Listen, too uh, emotionally invested for me. Honestly, you know, I would be in the background too with my um my phone recording me like World Star. <laughs> oh, didn't you know this is where they got the Street Fighter Two backgrounds? Didn't you know that this is a live recording of those scenes? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Kiryu won the Iron Fist tournament. <laughs> Not the Iron Fist tournament. Yeah. Now, now what are we here. at this point? So we just took over the castle. Um, we are now the uh, owner because Nishitani decided to run away and, and hide. Can I just walk up to people and fight them for castles? Absolutely. <laughs> and now we have You're Dan Brody. <laughs> I, I definitely can. I definitely can. <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> I mean, legally, for, for legal reasons, I don't think I can. Good question in chat. What I want to know is where does Kiryu buy these explosive cigarettes from? Uh, it's the smoke shop right around the co uh, corner from the park uh, where <laughs> the uh, homeless camp is. There's an old lady that that sells them. So what literally anyone could just story? go get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone can buy them if they they know what's up. But I, I think you have to see Mizurogi first before she's just like, yeah, I got the stuff. Okay, but what's her backstory? <laughs> to be fair, I don't remember. I feel like I feel like if you're making explosive cigarettes, you were a either in some really top secret government spy agency program, or two, you just uh, <laughs> you got really bored. She makes a uh, she has a cigarette shop just in general. Cigarette shop to explosive cigarette shop. That's a that's a big jump. So one day she was just like super bored and said, you know what, I want to lace some. C4 in these. <laughs> Pretty much. We never know what these people like plan. Because you also have uh, Komaki who was teaching here you different fighting moves, just like, yeah, but you can get stronger. And now we're going golfing. I we're going golfing, right? Um How's your swing? 
If they let me get to that golf club in the right corner, show All you. All right, how, uh, time to find out. Let you know how this one is. I might have broken it at this point. Oof. No worries. Swinging around like that. No golfing today, folks. Wow. Did someone just throw someone in security? <laughs> yeah, it, it, they <laughs> failed. They definitely tried it, and they, they failed. Because I, I ran like the, the other way. You, I feel like this is the point where you just go boo 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 stuff. <laughs> like how the game just gave me an achievement. Like, you ran into uh, X amount of people. Pop unlocking achievements while speedrunning. How could you? It's an in-game achievement. I'm sorry. It's okay. Right. I'm this proud guy of does you. not allow. Uh, <laughs> want to uh, let me pick up the shotgun? He's not killing people, right? Oh no, that guy definitely got shot in the back of his thigh. He's fine. Oh, okay. He might not be the able to walk until like 2030. It's fine. <laughs> Fine. He can. He can. He can handle it. What do you mean? He's fine. <laughs> it's like that Jennifer Lawrence meme from the Hot Ones when she's crying from all the the hot wings, and she's like, "What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? What do you mean he's fine? He got shot in the back of his thighs. He, he's no, just in a little bit of pain. <laughs> at this point, I believe this is the Nishitani hideout. Yep. So this is our set piece. This is going to be where we go and we fight a couple bosses, mini bosses, and we're going to be fighting some goons out here using the agents on the heat mode that we've been using the entire game and continuing that into this. We'll also be fighting Oka, Mikawa, Uchiyama, and also Nishitani. And we'll be focusing for Nishitani's fight on DoD heat mode and an EX action for the phase change. And once again, QTE is pressed X to win. So there goes our first goon fight, and um, we go. I like to get as far away as possible as I can from Shishido because he can definitely hit me with a sledgehammer. Now, what is something in this place that can end up really bad if you don't take care of immediately? Are there things in this area that are where it's just too condensed and you're not able to reach certain things, or do you just use explosive cigarettes for this area? Um, I mainly use the explosive cigarettes. Uh, something that can really hurt you is if uh, Shishido hits you and you get slammed into an enemy and you lose health and you have to heal yourself because your friend is sabotaging you. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You don't take any damage from him hitting you, but... Ooh! Ooh. I did not know he could do that. Ooh! Well, there goes Shishido. Hitting you with his mallet. Now, my question is, are the cigarettes usable items, or are those a skill that you use when your heat gauge is at a certain level? You can use them regularly. It's just when like, you have the uh, the heat on, uh, they explode immediately. Uh, if you use them regularly, you hear like a little beep, you know, like a do, 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 and then, you know, it blows up. But are they consumables that you have to rebuy over and over, or are no. they? We just have them infinitely. <laughs> Dang! This was okay. the infinite wealth that they talked about all along. It was cigarettes. It was cigarettes. Cigarettes were number one all the time. Mm-hmm. My question is though. Like, can here you smoke these as if they were regular cigarettes and no, not activate the no, explosion? No, he has regular cigarettes oh. for those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so those aren't infinite, though. I hope they look no. very distinct. <laughs> yes. Imagine just you know, it's been a rough day, beating up a whole bunch of people, and you, you just want to take a break on a Kame's, uh, a Kame's, uh couch, <laughs> and it's the wrong cigar. You know, this is a little known feature for Yakuza games. I love how each and every character has a different name. Like, that has always been something that has astounded me about this series, is the fact that they always give all the gangsters names. Uh, and I don't know, that is just a nice little detail. It is. 
But all right. So that guy is going down. Tisha don't know. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Stop him prepping the sweetie. <laughs> Someone said, or maybe the infinite wealth were the friends we made along the way. Oh, that's a good point. That is a good so we're point. We're going to just use a little bit right there, prop ourselves back up, and we're into the room. Yes. And back to Nishitani. Yes, Nishitani. He's one of my favorite boss themes. So we're going to go right into this right into this fight do dod heat mode and an ex heat action for the phase change uh but once again that qte is going to be an x to skip and this should work relatively fine uh just like the last boss battle some awesome fight choreography along the way look at that kick wow that was a roast this day i'll Ooh. never know how he survived Listen, he had his suit tailored in a very specific way for this exact kind of eventuality. You would think that Nishitani would get tired of getting kneed to the face. Never. He no. loves it. He did come out of that fire a little bit too happy. Well, he, like, he I think has he a line in the story where he's just like, oh, you're so strong, it turns me on. I'm like, all right, calm down, friend. Oh, no, he was, oh, so he was just okay. Happy. okay yes, gotcha. he's very happy to fight Kiryu. And after that boss fight right there and Nishitani's nap time, we are in the chapter five finale. And we are going to start with a little lull period in the beginning, uh, some taxi time, some more taxi time, a temple, and then some no more nap time. And then it's going to be time to finish the mission. We'll start in the construction yard and go from there. <laughs> So, lots of things on your agenda. So, do you have a game plan here? Is there any items that you like to get as you head into the final chapter? Is there any upgrades that you like to make in particular just to make sure you're good? Or is, at this point, are you pretty much set? I'm pretty much set at this point. Ah. I'm assuming all the other shops that you've done at this point were to make it so you don't have to stop and do anything in the last chapter? Yep. Last chapter, I just, I just zoom. Just, just zoom. We just, we just zoom. <laughs> like a cat on catnip. <laughs> <laughs> just taxi here, taxi there. Now, one of the things that I do find interesting about this game is it, it is really, really difficult to despawn enemies, if I remember correctly. And you can't just go inside shops to despawn things. So you have this all routed for where the enemies are and are not, I assume. Um, or where they generally appear? Or is it random? They appear at random, but uh, I know where the fight, the little uh, fight symbol is for Akame's uh, side quest thing for the network. And once you interact with that, that will despawn them. I did have a couple of practice runs uh, way back when where I would interact with the uh, fight request and they would despawn and then respawn in the exact same spot. And I would have to keep interacting with the quest until they went away. Oh, that sounds rough. It's but very knowing scary. that sounds like it helps a ton. Yeah. Feels good not to have to fight everything along the way. So the last question I'll ask is, I'm, I'm sure chat's just as curious as I am. What is your favorite karaoke song in this game? In this game? There was a... Uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a new song they added, and it was just for Christmas, and it's uh, it includes Kiryu dressed as uh, Ono Michio with the Santa hat on, and it's, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world. Oh my god. Like we're singing about a sad, lonely Christmas. Or about <laughs> trying to have a good Christmas. 
I feel like that's the best. I kind of want to see Sad Kiryu in a Christmas outfit. You know what? I need somebody to mod this game so that they just put Kiryu in an ugly Christmas sweater with like a Rudolph on it that's looking super cheerful. And then we just see Sad Kiryu. It just kind of makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time. <laughs> I was I was waiting for him to throw that fat flashbang so we can get to this part. And so at this point, we're at the construction yard with the Omi Alliance. And uh, this is pretty much going to lead us into Omi Alliance headquarters, where we will later fight the final boss. But the big thing is going to be heavy attacks with the shovel here and oh, no, um, using agent <laughs> style heat <laughs> mode on Shishiro to delete one health bar and uh, trigger his flashbang early. Look at Spider-Man. You get I feel him, like Spidey. I feel you really didn't like that shovel. Yeah, I don't know why he tossed the shovel. I was looking directly at the prompt to, to go up. It's okay. <laughs> when shovel doesn't got you, cones got you. I think Kiryu just wanted the cone. That's what it is. Right. He heard us talking about the cone of justice. You know, I think the thing I love about seeing this in speedrun mode is you're like, didn't we just beat this guy up? And it's, it really does feel like that. Like, we just beat this guy up again and again and again. He just does not get a break. He's he's in the list of characters that Kiryu has had to sit down multiple times. You have Kuze from Zero. Um, Nagashima uh, from Six. I, I don't know what it is about these characters that... Uh, you fight them repeatedly, and they just come back for some more. He's dead. No, he's fine. <laughs> no, the Nishitani, that, that is it. No, that's not that's not his last rodeo, I promise. He has not moved. <laughs> Yet. Now the big thing... <laughs> coming up, we got Shishido. We're going to try and grab a shovel and try and uh, disrespect him in the same way we were going to with Nishitani. And there's the shovel, our best friend, and we're just gonna heavy that boy into submission. There we go. Delete a health bar off of him. Hey, and Shishido um, does not like the shovel either. All right, what's what's up with everybody today? Everybody just wants ice cream cones. And uh, Shishido was our uh, partner for a hot minute, and now he's betrayed us. What are Japan's ice cream cones made of? Jeez, that looked like it hurt. I said ice cream cone, traffic cone. That's the <laughs> word. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing, different get a, sauce. Get a big enough scooper, we can still make it work. Rocket boots? No, those are wheelies. Actually, those are Shadow the Hedgehog shoes. Oh, oh. right. <laughs> Sir, is he okay? But the only no. difference He's between Shadow and Kiryu is if you take off Kiryu's shoes, he could still deal the damage. What can Shadow do? <laughs> Ooh! Shadow Slander. Uh, on GDQ. write some very, very damning poetry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has chaos control, but... And next we are at the Omi Alliance headquarters, and this is the entrance into our set piece, where we're going to be focusing on protecting Watase and using our agent style heat mode and Firefly to nuke all the enemies pretty much immediately, as you can see from that explosion there and the dead bodies there. Uh, they're gone. That man was spinning on the floor like a Beyblade. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to be a break dancer, don't finish him. No. I'm not, no, no, no. No shame in this house, no judgment. Hey, judgment's another game. <laughs> the powerhouse of a character. You know, you just drag two people outside. I like how that one just waited to pull out the gun, like instead of pulling out the gun as he was going through the door. Yeah, he, uh,. He knew what was up. And once again, using that wonderful cigarette to uh, just boom. Oh! That Ooh. sounded painful. Oh, there was a gunman still up. You know what? And then Kiryu starts shooting himself. Like, <laughs> no, that was, I got shot. <laughs> so I didn't just see Kiryu start shooting afterwards. Um, Don't. 
No, that that never okay. happened. Okay. Oh, you Definitely. left your blood on the wall. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, that Nama, never happened. No, I'm gonna see what you all understand. It, I get it. It looked like it was shooting to the untrained eye, but what Kirio uh -huh. was doing was he picked up that gun and saw that like everybody was was you know one guy was stealing everyone else's bullets so he was just giving them back to everybody just sorting them out and then after he was done gave the gun back to its original owner he was just returning yes. property that's all he was doing i see i see yeah. okay <clears throat> and they were you so overjoyed they took a nap and now we jump right on into the courtyard and uh yeah we're gonna deal with serpents uh, that, that's good. That's good. Or we're, we're not. We're going to serpent to the opposite side and then get some more agents down heat mode and some uh, fireflies. So it's going to be our best friend. So let's do this. Yeah, see, if I saw all those people in the middle and I knew who they were, I would. I can lose a finger. <laughs> it's like I can lose a pinky today. Why, do you know Why are we shirtless? Or? Uh, Cause it's cooler. You're not wrong. Like you have these four hulking men with these amazing tattoos. Of course they have to go shirtless. They gotta tear off that shirt for that final. They're just they're just showing off what they paid for with the with the tats. That's all. I mean, it is impressive. Um. So what happened there with the gun? Um, <laughs> nothing. Reconstructive I don't know what face you're talking surgery. about. You know, some, yeah, yeah some just good old plastic surgery. No, nothing. Okay. Sorry, I was nothing looking away. Uh, what happened? Somebody Ooh. got, uh, reconstructive face surgery with a bullet. Well, I didn't see a gun. Where's the gun? Don't worry about okay. it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I definitely got shot by a shotgun. I, that, that must have been what you're referring to, right? Mm, no, it looked like Kiryu had a handgun in his own hand. Oh, that's the regular he cigarette I was talking about. <laughs> Kiryu doesn't shoot people. I don't know what you're talking about, Namu. Oh, okay. I, you know, I am, I do wear glasses, so I am blind, so I could have just, you know, I'm a little far from my Are monitor. sure? That is just the glasses, cause I wear glasses, and I I, I know. What I also I saw. wear glasses. <laughs> I did yeah. not see a gun. That totally never and, happened. And here we are, chats. Only Alliance headquarters, and I believe this is the final boss. Yes. Er, yes, this is Shishiro, and we're going to have four phases to this fight. Uh, we have. Of course, our phase one, we're gonna use a Tarner right off the bat, do our DOD heat and our DOD EX heat action uh, to plow through this phase. And then phase two, we're gonna use a Tarner if needed and continue the same bits. And we'll do that with phase three. And then for four, we're gonna go right on into it using all Tarner we have left, DOD heat, DOD heat actions, and then agent style heat mode for the light attacks, which will get us through quite quick. And this time, Instead of X, our QTE is a triangle. Exciting, I know. And we just, uh... Everything ends at, at the triangle. All these excuses for curing in chat. Someone said that's a rice snack. <laughs> You're sharing it. <laughs> Ever seen JoJo's and the guy that punches uh, people to heal them? That with a Glock. <laughs> Someone said Kiryu doesn't kill people. He does test the Japanese healthcare system, though. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> there you go, Namu. You got all your answers right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously. I see, I see. Why is our budget 30 billion yen over or on the medical expenses? Some guy keeps going through Japan and mur er, hurting people. <laughs> One man band. <clears throat> I will say, this is one of my favorite final boss fights uh, of all time. A really good one. The song is so good. I love that they let this game be cinematic rather than realistic. And I think that's one of the things that makes Yakuza work so well, is that they really emphasize 
well, just the absurdity of it, and they just go along with it. There's nothing to question. This is what game it is, and it will take no uh, questions. Yeah, because, like, no one's going to get up after getting kicked off the second floor to dodge a chandelier. Not only that, nobody can cut through a, nobody can cut through a chandelier chain with a katana, especially not with that part of the blade. But here we are. Not it with, works. Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, some other people said that it wasn't a gun, it was an airsaw <laughs> or a nerf gun. Okay, okay. Someone else said that it was acupuncture. <laughs> I have to disagree with the nerf gun because I don't even think Kiryu knows what a nerf gun is. He just found out what a shotgun mic is a couple of days ago. I am dying at the high He doesn't high kill speed. people unless they're flying a helicopter. All right, can you explain <laughs> that one to me? I'm dying at the high-speed acupuncture that he's dealing out. <laughs> Listen, when you really got to help somebody out, you really got to help somebody out. And we're going to get that nice little block in there, and boom. I didn't realize my heat ran out, and I took the Tarner maximum. But it's okay. Ooh. I'll probably That's lose, okay. Like, a, now you have Katana. Yeah. I always say, like, here you has, like, the best reflexes because if you get punched in the face and you turn around and elbow someone, how does your body know to do that reflexively? Instinctively. He's been taking <laughs> lessons from Goku. <laughs> Dude's got that ultra instinct ready. So then who in the cast would be Vegeta? Majima. No, Majima would probably be more so like Piccolo. He's always cussing Kiryu out. I love how everyone's just standing the, um, out in the courtyard just watching this, but they actually can't <laughs> see it from the point of view. Like, they're just looking up at a roof, but they can't actually see this fight. I feel like if you were up on that, or down below that, all you would hear is clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> yeah. <And> <laughs> See, the thing is, they both forgot that if one of them bought a water bottle and waited until the other one ran, they could have won this fight. They just slip. <laughs> and... Ooh. Oh, I've never had him grab me? Okay. <laughs> That's never happened before. And after QTE, it is time. Actually, it was right when I hit triangle. <laughs> soon as they head but in three two time now kiss <laughs> yay <laughs> let's go g g's let's go and that is yakuza like a dragon guided. Well done, Pop. Get to the credits just in case someone's going through this game. Thank y'all. Wow. Wow. Amazing run, Pop. Amazing run. That was almost two hours and it didn't it didn't even feel like it. Not even remotely. That was that was so entertaining. Great job, not just Pop, but that phenomenal couch. Y'all were amazing. Y'all need to give some 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 props to y'all as well. Thank you very much. It was Thank wonderful you. to be here. Now, before we go, I mean, there I see, I see three fantastic beings right here that need to uh, let all these wonderful people in chat know where to get some more of their just fantastic energy, vibes, and wonderful content. I'll go first. First, I want to thank these <clears throat> for being the host, being a wonderful host, and uh, cheering me on right before we went on. Thank you, Namu and Thor, for joining along with this. It was last minute, but I appreciate y'all. You guys can find me on Twitch or uh, sometimes live on TikTok or YouTube at Pop No Tarts. Uh, this weekend, I'm doing an event with Team Sega as a part of Game Blast, where if we hit the max goal, I have to play Persona 3 Reload on Merciless. If we hit a thousand, I got to speed run Persona 3 Reload. So that'll be fun. Namu. And... Namu? 
Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm Namu. You guys probably already saw me yesterday for my run of a Sprinkled Dairy in Resumo 5. I enjoyed being on the couch for Yakuza, even though I've never played any games, but I was here for the vibes and the hilariousness and ridiculousness that is this game. I enjoy it, though. Uh, you'll probably see me more on uh, tonight as I'm commentary uh, for King of Hearts to randomize a one hour challenge later on this evening around 10. Um, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash supernamu uh, where I play a variety of other video games and I also speedrun uh, besides Resident Evil 5, Final Fantasy and King of Hearts as well. And my name is Thormangander. You can catch me on Twitch. You can also find me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and more. Um, I play video games with alternative controllers, such as Dark Souls, Sekiro, Elden Ring, with steering wheels, Donkey Kong Bongos, DDR pads, and a bunch of other alternative controllers. So if you want to see something fresh, something weird, something new, be sure to stop on by. We play a wide variety of games, and we would love to have you in our all-inclusive community that also focuses on neurodivergencies, black communities and also uh mental health would love to see you there so thank you for having me pop this has been a blast and i love commentating my god and i mean that's 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 definitely some uh some stuff we need more of around here i was just talking with uh pop and some others last night about that how we need more uh services and communities to help out with uh, all that um so thank you that is that is definitely definitely needed especially in these days and times but uh thank you all so very much for just some of the most entertaining um let's let's just call it catering uh over the last two hours <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so very much we're gonna get out of here real quick take a break uh, we got to clean up some of these bodies and chairs and uh, put all these traffic cones away. And uh, we'll be back bodies. for uh, what? Th th no, there were uh, just fake stunt double bodies. Um, <laughs> 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 we're going to clean up a little bit and come back with some more beat em up action with Double Dragon 3, the Sacred Stones. See you soon. <laughs>